everyone, it's Annette Green here, and we are going to have some fun today with the mini pancake maker again, my new release for Elizabeth Craft Designs, and some Posca pens, and do a whole lot of fun experimentation with embossing folders and different treatments that you can get with different materials. So let's get right into things. We're going to make this little pizza box at the end. Really quick before we get started on our fun little project today, uh, I will say welcome to all my new subscribers. Uh, if you are here for the first time, a special welcome to you. And if you're returning, of course, uh, thank you for being here. Every week in 2024, I do a crafty or craft related video. So you can check out my channel if you like. So I have been playing around with uh, 3D embossing folders. I got some new ones here from Spellbinders. And uh, this one with all the flowers is called Flower Frenzy. And that's the one I'm kind of going to be working with mostly today. And this one is called Leafy. So Flower Frenzy is, these are huge. This is so awesome to have them this big, honestly, because now it just opens up your world for so many projects. This is from end to end. The actual design is five and a half inches by um, eight and a half inches. Same with this one. This is that Leafy one. Leafy, that's what it's called. And this is going to be so great for so many things. I just realized there's the big circle ring light. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, if you didn't see that one better without the ring light, that's the flower one. So just kind of out of curiosity, playing mad scientist, I was trying out a bunch of different materials and inks and pens and watercolor and all kinds of stuff. So I thought I would share a few of my trials and tribulations and then we'll move on to the project. Okay, so you do have to remember that 3D embossing folders are deeper than your traditional embossing folders. So this is an example of how vellum, just regular vellum, nothing special, nothing thick, nothing super thin, just right down the middle. Um, it does do the impression nicely however it does tend to tear in some places you see there uh, so that's not cool uh, I did watch a video where someone suggested to cut it out at the same time as a piece of cardstock that did a little bit better there's still some cracking and just a little bit of tearing through uh, but you do get double duty out of this so if you don't mind a little bit of that um, you know, this is kind of efficient to do it because I can use this on something and this on something. Uh, then uh, I decided, I watched a video again, and the person who was testing things out with vellum ordered like a 100 pound vellum on Amazon, which I did today, and it'll be here Monday. Um, and she had great success with it. So well, I will come back eventually and show you that, and, and I will wait for that if I decide to do vellum. Now this is something I don't know if it even exists anymore. This is frosted. Tim Holtz Ideology frosted material. This has been great to use in little windows when you make the little houses, all kinds of applications. It's, it's thick like acetate, but it has a frosted look to it. And you can see I've already tested some alcohol markers on it. Uh, it's kind of cool. It does have a little bit of a white edge to it, just like when you do vellum. Uh, it's just a little more sturdy and stiff. So I was just kind of playing around. I think that would work nicely. Okay. And then I cut a piece out of just regular ivory heavyweight cardstock. Did my whole, you know, embossing thing. And I will say I do spritz this and rub the water on both sides with my fingers. Sneak peek. Um, before I do run it through just so my paper doesn't crack and that works beautifully and I did that with the black as well but so you saw this this is the recessed side of the embossed design and I'm going to do something fun we're going to test it out together here on uh, the video in just a moment but I took some Posca pens these are paint pens by Uni and they're Poscas and I love them and those are great for art journals and all kinds of things because you know it's got they have different tips this is sort of a fine ish but there's even finer tips and then there's even wider tips so I just took some time and colored in all those recessed areas with all those bright colors and you'll see what we're gonna do with that test that out same thing with black cardstock this is nothing super special it's sort of heavyweight 
uh, sprayed it with water, both sides, rubbed it with my fingers so there's even coverage of water, and then sent it through. And I've been playing around with some like mm, Bronze Age Metallic Wax from Art Alchemy. I believe this is by Finnabar, a Prima product. So um, that is quite beautiful, I think, just by itself on black. This is also on black, same paper. And I took some time with Distress Oxides and a little dauber, and I went around and I colored in everything. But you can see, you, it, you have a hard time staying just on the raised edges here. Uh, I did my best. I had a little, you know, I don't have anything smaller than this, really. So uh, you could use little ma makeup applicators or something like that if you were worried about it getting in those places in between. Because now you see it doesn't look super black anymore. It looks a little bit gray as opposed to this. But this might not bother you, it might be kind of pretty to you. So what I did, because I wasn't quite happy with just that, I took that same stuff I just mentioned, but in vintage gold, and I have started it down here. And this is so old, look at it. But it's still, still good, still works. I put a little on my finger, and I just kind of hit those raised edges, but I also let it go down into the black, because that black looks so gray. I don't want it to look gray. I, I don't mind the gold going down in there. So I'll hold this up. Uh, somebody did this with the Foundry Wax from Ranger, which also will be here on Monday, because <laughs> I want to try that too. Um, that is something that's a little bit similar to this, but a little bit different properties, and you have to heat set it, and, and then it just transforms into something amazing. So I can't wait to get that and play with it. I'm only two years behind that trend. Uh, but you can see this is really super pretty by the time you get done. And just for fun, I thought I would share a couple of things I did try as well. This is um, vellum, and I use all alcohol inks on the recessed side, the debossed side, and just drop the colors here and there thinking, oh, that might look fun from the other side. Uh, I'm not a huge fan, but I thought I'd show you. Some people might like that. Uh, it's, a, it's hard to control. I think that's why that's a little rough. Now, this one is also on vellum, and that's the debossed side. This looks kind of cool from the front. But what I did here was I used alcohol markers to color in the flowers and the leaves. And then I grabbed my VersaFine Claire in a green and I did that whole swiping over it thing like I did with the black. Um, the only problem here is VersaFine Claire and um, Vellum don't get along. Uh, it never, never dried. And this is overnight. So you just saw me put my finger in it. So, you know, you just have to use maybe archival or a different kind of ink if you want to try that technique because I just feel like it's really pretty and I really had hoped it would dry overnight. It just did not. And yes, I probably could spray a fixative on here if I really wanted to take the time to do that, but I don't. Okay, I didn't forget. I gotta grab a piece of, well, I'm gonna grab two. Pieces of scrap white paper. And again, this is the embossed side. This is debossed on this side. That's where I did all my coloring. And I'm gonna take a black ink pad, cross your fingers, and I'm just going to lightly drag this down. I'm not pushing because I don't want it to go down into the areas where I've colored. Uh, this is something that I saw Wendy Vecchi do on Instagram. I will link to her below. Uh, she does wonderful, like, I don't think they're lives, but they're actual tutorials. They go on for a little bit. She takes a lot of time to explain things and show techniques. And I don't know how often she does it either, but I've just been catching them every time she does them. And this was something that she did. And when she did it, I was just like blown away. Like I have to try that. So. You can see how transformed that has now become and how beautiful that is. There are some places in here where I didn't get it and I don't want to, you know, take the pad and push it down in there. So what Wendy did, and I don't know if it's going to matter. This is, um, maybe it has to be a Sharpie because this is permanent ink. This is pigment, but archival. 
So maybe I shouldn't use a water-based Tombow. It says acid-free, but I think I'm just going to go with a Sharpie over here. Okay, we'll test out a little area. She just kind of took it and where she really wanted to color in some places. Not everywhere, but just those really tight little small spaces. And, and I don't see any sort of like evident area that shows me that the Sharpie is different black than that VersaFine Claire. So I would just take my time to go in here and touch up those few little places, but I just think that's the coolest technique ever. So fun. As I'm finishing these last few little spots, uh, I will just remind you that the Posca pens are not required here. You can use any inks that you have. You can paint. You could um, use alcohol inks, I suppose, alcohol markers, regular markers. It really doesn't matter because you're coloring down in those recessed areas. And when the black ink goes over the top, um, it doesn't touch anything, so it doesn't matter. It's not interfering with it. It's not interacting with the, the chemical makeup or anything like that. So you can do all your coloring with whatever you want. Uh, as far as the black ink over the top, um, you just have to make sure that you have a nice juicy ink pad. You don't want it to be dry. You know, test it out on something. Re-ink it before you start, maybe, if you have a re-inker. Uh, I just use the VersaFine Claire Nocturne because it's a brand new pad for me and it's super juicy and wonderful. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm not going to use this whole thing. Gosh, I wish I could, but because we're going to make a little pizza box, I know I'm going to have to cut quite a bit of this down, but I'll try to save the little extras or maybe a small card or something else. Okay, now we want to make this little wreath for the top of our box. And so I have used my new die called Twiggy Things for Elizabeth Craft Designs. And there is um, this round wreath. <laughs> as well as the heart and the frame and all that. So I have cut it out three times with uh, just some heavyweight kind of ivory cardstock. I've got my Versam, Versamark, yeah, Versamark embossing pad here. I'm going to do one of these at a time. You can see off to the right I have my mini pancake maker all warmed up and ready to go. Uh, if you didn't catch it, I made a very fun video on shrink charms and embossing fun with this mini pancake maker uh, that I will link below if you'd like to check that out. So this piece of paper is for the Versa marking and this one will be for embossing powder. And I have grabbed fossilized amber but I also have um, this baked texture vintage beeswax from Seth Apter. So I'm going to mix the two. I want kind of a bright yellow to start with and fossilized amber seem like a good place to start. And you'll see when we put it in here, we can add to and change it up a little bit. Okay, in my little pancake maker, I will put a nonstick craft sheet circle in there. I just bought a couple of different, not different. I bought two of these nonstick craft mats from Hobby Lobby. They're only $3.79. They are big, 15 inches by 18. And I cut them apart. You can see one here. This is all from one sheet. I've got another one here for doing small project work. And I have all those circles cut out, four inch circles to fit in here. And got a couple of extras in case I don't feel like cleaning that one out. So we're going to pop this open, grab this guy, and pop it in there and shut the lid. Now, how long? About as long as it takes you to clean up your powder and get ready for the next one, I would say. 
And I just realized all this time that I did not have my microphone hooked to my body. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's take a peek. Looks pretty good. Now, if you looked at it and you said, eh, it's okay, but maybe we can do something more. This is where you can grab like a little spoon. You could do this like little pinches of it. Um, but I'm going to take some of that vintage beeswax just because I don't really want this to be like super solid yellow. And I'm going to add a little bit of this. This will make it a little more golden in some places. Okay, so we'll shut the lid on that for a bit. Okay. I just pulled this out. It's a little hot. When I added that next bit with the beeswax, that's why it kind of stuck. Um, but you can see there's a little bit of variation in the color now. It's kind of a nice bright yellow, but just a hint of golden in it from the beeswax. So I'm going to do that to three, all the other two here. Uh, now, this is why I like to keep a couple of extras of these nonstick craft circles. And maybe you prefer to do the parchment paper so you can just throw it away and not have to clean it all the time. Uh, but you do sometimes get this stuff that goes over the edge and sticks to your little circle. It scrapes right off, but you have to take the time to do it, you know. So that's why I have a couple extra circles. So I've got a fresh one in there ready to go. But again, if you don't want to mess with it, you can just do parchment and throw it away. Okay, we're going to experiment here because my idea was that when I cut this down, I want to layer up these three. Well, right now it just looks like a whole bunch of the same thing. There's not a lot of variation between those layers. So what you can do, and we're going to experiment together. I think this should work. I'm going to put that back in there for just a second. One at a time, I've grabbed Vintage Photo, and all I'm doing by putting it back in is just sort of making sure that it heats up again. Uh, the embossing powder gets a little liquefied that's on there without burning it. And I'm just going to, I don't know how this is going to go, I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of Vintage Photo here and there. These are Distress Embossing Glazes, so they do definitely uh, have a translucency, so this might work out quite nice, we hope. So let's see, just for a second, okay, take a peek, Ooh, a little bit of smoke there, see that? Maybe that was in there a little too long but it looks just like how I wanted it to. It's got a little bit of brown mixed in there. I think that's going to help. So I'm going to do that to all three. And maybe I'll switch up the color. Maybe I'll grab a little bit of like rusty hinge, perhaps. Do I have any? Yeah. Grab some rusty hinge. Just tiny bit of orangey red kind of color. I think that's long enough. Okay. Because, you know, if we do the same exact thing to all three, now we're back to that same situation where it's just three of the same things stacked on each other. But if we add some different colors each time to each layer, maybe that'll help give it a little more interest. We shall see. Okay, came out great. I do like that rusty hinge on there. So there's the vintage photo. There's the rusty hinge. And here's the one that I didn't do anything to, which I think I'll keep on top, maybe, or in between. I don't know. But as you can see, it adds a little more interest now to have them just slightly different in color instead of all the same flat color. And I will say that I'm not a big fan of using the nonstick craft circles for this application. So I would use this for shrink plastic, uh, single layer embossing where you already have the powder on it, where it's not going to, you know, ooze over the sides. But the additional sprinkling really creates a mess. And I have had to clean all four of these, and I don't like that. <laughs> so 
for what that's worth, I will switch back to parchment circles when I do uh, this type of overflow sprinkling. And just in case you've never heard of the pizza box die, this is a die from Elizabeth Craft Designs. It's been around for a long time. In fact, I think it's kind of on its way out. Uh, it is on sale right now for $19.99, which is great. Uh, it's number 1781, the pizza box. I'll link it below. I'm thinking that they have very few left, but if this is something that you like, I would definitely get it because it makes the cutest little gift box. And it is a large die. These are all the pieces and parts here. So you would need an extended platform to cut this out. And that's the base piece that you saw there. So I have pre-cut that out out of the sunny yellow color cardstock. And all the score lines are there. So I just have to fold it to put it together. And I'm going to use my pretty paper, of course, for the background on top of the box. So they actually have a die in here for that. You can use the little scallop, which I might, I don't know. We'll see how it does on this embossed cardstock. They do have an inset square as well. And I've just made the decision that I'm going to use this very cheerful pink for the scalloped part of the square. And then I use the inset square for that. And you notice that I cut way down here in the corner so that I can use the rest of these pieces for the sides of the box, which I think is going to be really pretty. Okay, so we'll prep the box by folding on all these score lines. Okay, all the scores are there and burnished really well, ready to go. But before I assemble the box, I always like to decorate most of it first. And so if you look at the packaging, it's a little misleading. This little tabby thing they show in the picture on the bottom, uh, that should be on the top. Because if you think about a pizza box, that little tab is what you pull on to open the box. So I know that this is going to be my, my lid. And so that is where this will go. So I'll get that on there now. Okay, and then I'll take a moment with some liquid glue and put down my layered wreath, my little twiggy wreath. And because I'm gluing with art glitter glue, it is holding, but it is trying to resist a little bit because of that embossing is very like slick and clear. Uh, so I'm just putting down my craft sheet and sort of a heavy little book while I move on to the next step. That's setting to dry. I just wanted to show you some past pizza boxes that I have made. I do like to add a little bit of pattern paper on the sides. Uh, this one was a little skinnier. This is a little wider. This is more of what I like to do is put that wide, wider strip on there. And that measures just about, not quite a half inch. It's 7 sixteenths by 4. And I believe that's all the way around. So that's what I'm going to do with my pretty black paper here very carefully. I'm going to use a craft knife on a mat to do it instead of a paper trimmer because it is embossed. I don't want it to get all torn apart. Before we get these on, I'm just taking a little bit of black ink and hitting those sides now that I've cut it away because remember this was embossed on a off-white cardstock so we don't want to see that white edge. So I'll do that to all four. And 
I need to cut some more strips for these other few panels because I just realized I've only cut enough to do the top of the lid and I also want to do the base because these will tuck inside like so and we won't see them when it's closed but we will see it when it's open. Now you can opt to skip that altogether and just leave that uh, undecorated if you like. Sometimes I do it that way. This one I built um, the upside down way but I also did leave that bottom part with nothing. So it's just what you want to do. And I had just enough from that piece I already cut from to do the three more but I also had this over here just in case. I still had plenty to work with if I needed any more. To the inside I have gone ahead and cut another piece of that pink cardstock with that scalloped square. And now I'm just applying double-sided adhesive tape to some of these tabs. This is from Elizabeth Craft Designs, of course. And you see I have put it here and here. I'm about to put some here because all this will fold together. And then I need to put some on the this side of these tabs so that this can come up and around and over. And so this will need some adhesive here as well. Okay, so I have taken some of my wider tipped Posca pens and done a little rainbow effect on a piece of cardstock here. And before I die cut my butterfly, this is from my new layered butterflies um, die set. Before I do that though, I want to use the coordinating stamp from Love and Roses and stamp it first in black. And the best way to do this, especially on this Posca painted background because it is paint. It might be a little bit resistant to the stamping ink. I want to use a stamp platform. So we'll get that in there, mount our little butterfly, and we'll die cut it after. I feel like that's better with this particular um, stamp set, but you know, some people like to do it in the other order and die cut first and stamp second. Okay, and that looks really good just one time. I don't even have to re-ink it or anything. I am going to give that a second to kind of dry up a little, but that's going to be cute on the top of my very colorful box. I'm tending to think I want to do a little embossing on here, a little clear emboss, give it a little shine to kind of go with that shiny wreath. So we'll try that out. Okay, that die cut out lovely, looking good. I did have to let it dry really well, and I've got my Versamark, I've got my ultra thick embossing enamel, and I have reheated up my little pancake maker over there. So I'm just gonna pounce this over the entire surface really well. Whoops, <laughs> get back here. You could do it this way. Okay. And then we'll just dump a bunch of that clear powder on there. This is very thick and crystally, but it makes a really nice, glossy, thick coat. And you can put more than one coat, of course, if you want. It starts to really look like enamel if you do that. Okay, I'll pop that in my pancake maker. And like I said before, it's just the amount of time it takes to dump your powder back into the container and kind of clean up a little bit. Okay, beautiful. Can you see it? It's so pretty and glossy. You could put some sprinkles in there. If you have that kind of embossing powder, it had a little sparkle to it. I don't really have anything that's glittery like that and clear, so I don't want to mess with it anymore. I think I'm going to call that finished. And once it's cool, I will glue it to the top of my box, probably with some foam tape. So let's get in here a little closer and we'll pop that right on there. Of course, you can die cut a sentiment, happy Mother's Day, thank you, happy birthday, whatever, but there you go. Isn't that cute? So pretty. Very, very colorful for me. I like color, but rainbow is usually not my thing, but this is super cheerful. 
and it would be great to put a little um, a little bit of candy in here, a very small gift. Uh, what fits in here perfect are those Ritter Sport candy bars that come like in a perfect square. They fit in here perfectly. I have purchased those many times for this very reason. Of course, you can buy little candies to put in there, different individual candies. Everything uh, that you can come up with, I'm sure, will be great. Okay, well, that is it for me today. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week in the next crafty video.